The British Museum's statue of Hadrian has been taken off display and brought into the Stone Conservation Studio before going into the Hadrian exhibition. It is an iconic figure of the Roman Emperor, dressed in a flowing Greek mantle. It has been reproduced countless times and, over the years, has reinforced a long-standing perception of Hadrian as a peace-loving admirer of Greek culture and customs, a philoline. But curator Torsten Opper is not convinced the statue is all it should be. It was excavated in Cyrene, an important city uh, in northern Africa, and modern Libya, in 1861. Uh, it comes from a site there, the Temple of Apollo. Um, it was then shipped to the museum in late 1861 and it's been uh, on display ever since. The head and body were delivered as separate pieces to the museum and the 19th century museum staff must have decided that they went together, the Greek robes reinforcing the Victorian notion of Hadrian. First of all, it seems to fit very well um, all our concepts. Um, we have Hadrian is the first emperor with a beard, a full beard, and people have associated that with ancient Greece, his love of ancient Greece, um, and they've, they've called this beard a philosopher's beard. So that was highly symbolic. So, you know, it seemed at the time a really good match. You have Hadrian looking almost like a Greek philosopher in Greek dress, and you can well imagine him in his villa, possibly walking around like this. But this is not at all how Roman art worked. The head is clearly Hadrian. Um, it conforms to an official type, and we know vaguely how this system worked. There was a sort of court sculptor um, developing this type, and it was that then disseminated throughout the empire. And it really is important to have the emperor recognizable. That's why they took great care to conform to the type. But the clothing doesn't fit at all with Roman convention. We would expect to see this head um, in a statue clad in the toga, the official Roman state costume, uh, or in military dress. And not only does the clothing not fit with convention, the head doesn't sit well on the body. You can see from a distance that the head isn't quite right in proportion to the body. It seems a little bit on the small side. Um, but most importantly, you can see all this plaster fill all around here. You can see how wide it is. All this I'm pointing to here is plaster. This is not the way these were carved in antiquity. This is the part of the job I've actually really been looking forward to, and that's to start taking away the plaster, to see how much we can reveal of, the, of the, the, this Hadrian's head and then also the, the sculpture itself. Oh. Well, at least um, the material is nice and soft. But you can clearly see here and there that it doesn't match and that it wasn't carved to, to fit that socket. Mm. Oh, what a moment. Archaeology is all about making joins and creating yeah. things. Yeah. And, and now we're... And now we're going to see some probably other surprises behind this. the opposite, this. yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's lift it off then. Shall we lift it? Okay. If you could steady. Steady his head. Okay. I'm going to take a lift on. One of the chains. And you can see how the tenon is. Yes, yes. The socket has quite a different shape. Yes. And there's a, there's a cut here. So we just steady it there for a minute. So okay. you can just take stock. But as you say, it's the details that don't marry in. And then they just wanted it to be Hadrian. For the exhibition, the head and the body will be reunited, but making it obvious they are not a fit. Discoveries are constantly being made as museum staff study the objects in their care, and this is a lesson in the power of image. The Victorian Hadrian is no more.